welcome to this True Fire Christmas lesson. The song that I've chosen is When a Child is Born. Now this was originally, uh, I believe, based on an Italian classical melody, and it was later given English lyrics by Fred J. Uh, there's a few versions kicking around. The most popular is the Johnny Mathis version, which came out in the late 70s. And that's the version that I grew up listening to as a kid, and I, I always really loved it. Um, so I wanted to do a lesson on this. Uh, you know, this song, I think, is probably more popular in Europe than it was in the U.S. Um, you know, we have a few traditions over there. Uh, one that comes to mind around Christmas time is that uh, my dad would always leave a pint of beer out for Santa, rather than perhaps the more traditional uh, milk and cookies. So, make of that what you will. But anyway, my version of the song is probably more Jeff Beck than Bing Crosby. I'll play through the melody with some embellishments a couple of times. And then I'll break it down for you and show you uh, what I'm up to. And all that remains is to just wish everybody here a, uh, a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. through the way I'm playing the melody. So I'm starting here with the note A on the G string second fret with my index finger and then I'm playing the note D on the B string third fret with my second finger. And you can play these separately or you can let them ring together. I think it's kind of interesting when they ring together. Is my pinky finger on the fifth fret of the B string, the note E. So my notes are A, D, E. And then I'm doing a full step bend uh, with the pinky on the fifth fret B string, bending the note E to F sharp. A slow bend, apply a little vibrato. And when you're doing these full step bends, or any bends for that matter, play the note you're bending to first get that into your ear and then slowly bring the pitch up to it. Okay, so that's the first part of the melody. I'm playing the uh, fifth fret on the B string, the note E with my index finger. And then I'm playing the uh, seventh fret on the B string, the note F sharp, with my third finger. Then I'm bending that note F sharp up a half step to the note G, uh, essentially on the eighth fret of the B string, but I'm bending the seventh fret. Half step bend. Again, check your note. this little thing that's kind of like an Indian technique almost, um, you know, sort of thing you might find on a, um, a sitar or something to go. It's a very quick slide up and back. So as we're coming out of that bend, I start to, re to release the bend and as I'm releasing it, I quickly move my finger, the third finger, to the eighth fret and back to the seventh. So let me do it super slowly. But at real speed, it sounds like... Okay, it just gives it that interesting little, little slur kind of sound. And then I'm moving my second finger to the G string, the sixth fret, uh, and I'm bending the note C sharp to D. And that C sharp to D is in the melody. So I'm hit, letting the C sharp sustain for a moment and then bending it a half step up to D. So that whole section is... Okay, so so far we have... Alright, and then the next... 
six section. So I'm sliding my index finger up from the sixth fret to the seventh fret, and I'm covering the D and the G string. So I'm picking up the notes A and D. And then the next note is F sharp, but rather than play or I decided to bend to it. So I'm bending a quick half, a quick full step bend on the G string, ninth fret, the note E to F sharp. Again, play your note and bend to it quickly. And then coming out of that bend, I'm immediately putting my pinky on the tenth fret of the B string, the note A. Okay, so slowly. And then the next section, a very quick hammer on from the 10th fret on the B string, the note A, to the 12th fret on the B string, the note B, surprisingly enough. So we have a quick, a quick hammer on, A to B, then a quick bend. Full step bend, but we're cutting it off. We're not letting it come down again. So you're bending 12th fret on the B, up, and then just cutting it off. You can you can use your palm to kill the note. So, so far we have on this section. Okay. And then we're going to go, we're going to hit the, the note uh, B on the 12th fret, but we're going to slide from above down. Again, almost kind of like the sort of thing you might find in some Eastern music. All right, so we're sliding down from the 14th fret to the 12th fret. But I switch to the pinky because of what's coming next and slide from the 12th fret on the B string down to the 10th. Again, it's sort of like sliding from above. And then I just kind of hint at this note on the, uh, on the uh, ninth fret of the G string, the note E, by laying the chord down. I'm not actually picking it, I'm just, just laying my fingers down on this chord. And so now on the left hand, I'm barring across the uh, seventh fret, at least from the D string down. And then I have, um, of course, still the pinky on the 10th fret of the B string and the third finger on the ninth fret of the G string. And then I'm gonna do this sort of like harmonic thing where you have to, this is, this is that old um, uh, Lenny Bro trick, where you have to, uh, you have to be at least exactly 12 frets away from what you're doing. And so I'm hitting a harmonic on each of the notes that I have fretted. And the, and the way you do this, it's kind of a tricky uh, technique. Some people do it just with their fingers. I like to use a pick for it. And, and what you do is, um, you hold the pick between your thumb and your second finger, and you put the, and then you point your index finger at the string. So the pick is behind the index finger, and then as you hit, and you have to be very precise on this, hitting exactly over the metal of the fret. As you hit each of these uh, frets that you're that you're fretting with the left hand, so so you know, um, if you count up twelve, you're going to get nineteen on the uh, high E string. And as you as you hit the fret, you pick the string and touch it with your first finger at the same time. And that gives you this, this cool harmonic. 20 on the B, 19 on the G, 17 on the D. And you could, you know, I think possibly I'd play that slightly differently. You could go back and hit, perhaps hit the, uh, the 19 on the G again. You know, you can do anything with this really. And, that, and that's something I want to say about this. This is just a couple of plays through for me. If I was playing this over and over again, I, I would keep changing it because that's just kind of how I am. You know, so feel free to experiment with it. You don't have to play it exactly the way I'm playing it. In fact, I encourage you not to. I encourage you to put your own spin on it. But anyway, speech over with. So, next section. So I begin with this rake. I like raking so much, I probably should have been a farmer. Sorry. So, uh, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm palm muting through the strings, and then I'm lifting off when I get to the B string, so that note stands out, and you get this nasty, nasty in a good way, noise of the rake coming up to that note. So, our notes there are 12th fret to 10th fret on the B string. Back to 12 on the B, so 12, 10, 12, and 
and then a fast, a fast hammer pull off. 10 to 12 to 10 on the B string. Ten, twelve, ten, and it resolves onto onto twelve on the G string. So let me play that slowly. We have a nice bend, and I believe I raked into that bend as well because I can't help myself. Twelfth fret on the B string, bending up to fourteen, bending up a whole step. Again, check your pitch. 10, 12 on the high E string. And then there's this jazzy little pull off, basically slurring down 12, 11, 10 to 9. So after we've slurred to this 9, we're going to play 10 on the B. Now, there are lots of different ways to do this. Again, you could do the, uh, you could depress the bar and bring it up on the note, which is really a nice sound. You, or you could just hit the note and give it some, some trem abuse just to give it some heavy vibrato. And then we have this little melody. So for that, I added some more trem abuse. 11th fret on the G. 9th fret on the G, 7th fret on the G, and you could pull up on the bar to give the note a warble. You know, it, you, it, you can just play this straight. You can play it with by depressing the bar. Give it a warble, whatever you want to do. And you can either next, and then the next note is the 8th uh, fret on the B string, bent a full step. Adding vibrato, I would bend that with my second finger. Um, and maybe you could grab that note as the other note's decaying. That's tricky to do, but it sounds kind of cool. So that's still the same note, eight on the B string. I'm just slamming my finger down really hard on it and bending. And hoping the note's going to hold, which sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And then the last part of the melody, the when a child is born part, playing nine on the G string, the note E, over to F sharp on the B string at the seventh fret, half step bend, bending the same note F sharp to G with the first finger. And again, there's lots of little slides and slurs you can add to this. You could play that straight. You could slide into the nine on the G string, the note E. Or slide from above. And then again, with that slight sort of Indian sitar kind of thing. Again, a very quick half step shift up and back. Very quickly, almost you almost can't detect it. So, half step bend, F sharp to G, then a quick, you know, sort of flutter up to the 8th fret and back to the 7th fret on the B. And then, I, and then I drag my index finger all the way down to the 2nd fret, and that's going to be the last note of the melody. Where I bend a half step from C sharp to D and just hold that and let that sustain.